that one. There we go. Oh my god. That's a big mama. Oh my god. Holy crap. So hey guys, here's another of one of my DIY slash hack videos. Um, I'm gonna show you how I fish a Cinco 90 5% of the time. It's a Texas rig, or I should call it a modified Texas rig, which is actually called the Florida rig. It's not as well known as uh, the Carolina rig or the Texas rig, any of the rigs, the Ned rig, but there is a thing called the Florida rig. And um, actually even Sawgrass Bassin found a pair or a bag of old weights that said Florida rig on the weight. What is a Florida rig? It's basically a bullet weight with a screw, similar to a uh, swim bait hook. It's got a little screw in it and a little, little bit of uh, piping to put the line straight through and you basically line it up on your bait like this. But like I said, today I was gonna primarily talk about how I fish a Cinco and I use a weightless Florida rig. And I almost always use these as pro shops, the six inch Cinco's. Um, I'm fishing for big fish. I've caught, I don't know, maybe six bass over eight pounds in the last year on Seven six Corrado uh, flipping and pitching fluoro rod with a Sitka 200 50 pound braid. I upgraded the handle to a 100 millimeter handle as well. It's also my jig rod. It's my general purpose, like heavier, medium heavy rod. Um, this was also the same rod I used for bigger frogs that you may have seen in Atypical Outdoors' video on frog fishing. But so, when I'm fishing, most of the time, my Cinco's are in heavy cover. And part of the problem with fishing around here in Florida is our cover is so heavy and our weeds are so thick that they get hung on parts of your lure or bait that you never expect. And there's nothing more frustrating than making the perfect cast, having your Cinco land in the right place and get a long piece of grass stuck to it. I have had it so many times I'll actually probably cut in some scenes of me taking grass off of my Cinco's. It's it's not just treble hook baits here. And part of the problem with a lot of hooks like this one right here, which is a good hook, I'll show you, I actually still use this but for a slightly different application of the Florida, Florida rig. This is your standard EWG hook. This happens to be a really big Gamagatsu. It's um, one of their jungle hooks or monster hooks, I forget exactly what they call it. But see this little bend right here? When this lines up with the Cinco outside of the body, that little bend is gonna catch weeds. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. But it happens almost every cast on some lakes. And the other thing that catches weeds is the knot at the, top, at the line tie of the hook. And you say, well, why don't you just bury the hook into the Cinco? And you do, but or I do, 
But if any of you have fished a weightless Cinco a lot, you'll know one of the biggest frustrations is this blunt end of the Cinco. When it hits a harder bit of cover or thicker weeds, it inevitably slides down the hook and your presentation is ruined. So some people fish these hooks. This is a, it's a great solution. Actually, this is what Tactical Bassin tells you to use. It's a swim bait hook with a wire screw in keeper. And you basically just screw it in and then Texas rig it. I'm not gonna do it right now, but you get the idea. But this little bit of hook sticking out and that little bit of line on there is guaranteed to catch on weeds where I fish. And it is so frustrating. But this is much better in terms of the Cinco not sliding down. That's why I'm glad Gambler makes this. What is this you say? This is a Gambler hollow point plastic bullet. It's not even a weight, but it's shaped like a bullet weight. It's got the same screw in keeper as the Florida rig weights of old. This is an old school lead one. And I take this and I rig it on to the Cinco weightless. But this is only the first part of my Cinco um, rigging secrets. Since I use these bigger Cincos, I use a bigger hook. And since I'm using straight braid, probably 90% of the time of the 90% of the time I throw Cincos are this way. Um, I have these, these are some Mustad hooks and they're called the Big Mouth Hook. And this is a um, six aught heavy wire gauge hook. And it's actually for big tubes, for flipping and pitching Texas rig tubes. And the great thing about this hook, instead of this hook, very similar shape except for this little bend right here. See how this bend is still, it's still offset and it's still a wide gap, but it leans back. And if you were gonna rig this normally, it would be extra frustrating because there's nothing holding the bait on. That's what this little kickback is for, is to keep your bait on the front of the hook on the, over the eye. But since we're gonna be using this hollow point in front of it, it'll take care of the problem. All right, so I'll rig this up and I'll show you how I do it. The only tricky part about this is the first part, is getting the braid through the eye of the hollow point. I'm assuming that most people use this for some kind of finesse fishing because the hole that Gambler puts in here is tiny. And I really can't even go over 50 pound braid very easily and still get it through the hole. I got lucky that time I went through the first time. Sometimes I'll even take a lighter and just flick it under the line so that it's really nice and smooth and I can get it through the hollow point that way. So it's just like a bullet weight. You put it on there. Let me get this hook out of the way. Here's that Mustad big mouth hook there. Uh, it's the tube hook, like I said. So I just tie a straight Palomar, nothing fancy. I don't even double the line through. It's probably not a bad idea to double your line through the eye of the hook. Um, it's another trick that Tactical Bassin shares. But I've been tying my hooks like this forever, and I've never had the knot fail on, on braid. And just pull it tight. There you go. Trim the line. There we go. So there it is. Just looks like a normal Texas rig would. But so the nice thing about this hook is that this uh, barb of the hook the distance is almost the exact distance I'm going to need to have up here to fit the hollow point on. So you take your Cinco, you insert it like you would, like you do normal text rig, just about a quarter inch deeper than you normally would. And then you pop it out, Texas rig it, slide it down, put it back in and sometimes I'll text pose it, but 
if I'm throwing this, it's usually, like I said, in super heavy cover, and this hook has a big enough gap and is offset enough between the top of the eye of the hook and the top of the hook because it's designed for a tube that I find if I just bury it in the plastic that the fish usually will get the hook. There, just had to get it straight. So there it is, normal Texas rig. Then you take your gambler bullet and then you screw it in. It's as simple as that. And now if you hit a weed, the hollow point bottoms out on the eye of the hook. So there's no way for it to slide down. And now there's no kink in the hook to get caught on anything. So that's how I rig a Cinco. 90% of the time, if I'm using a Cinco, this is how I rig it. I will take a marker and black out the line, just like I would flipping or punching, or how I do with a frog. I don't know if it really makes a difference, but you know, it's super easy to do. Might as well do it. Up some line here. There you go. A Florida rigged weightless Cinco. And yeah, there are other hooks you can use to do this and other baits like um, I have here. I have all these other, these are in all types of worms that I will Florida rig. And I'll even with this same, this setup for the Cinco is the exact same setup I use for a speed worm. And if you live in Florida, you know how good one of these swimming worms or speed worms are. That's a good one. Wow, sounded good. Yeah. All right, here, come over here, come here. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not how you're supposed to land that much, it's okay. Oh. I got it! I did it, I did that with a mutton snapper one time. All right, I'm putting this down. Yeah. And it's pretty much just a Cinco with a tail. The only thing you got to think about when doing a speed worm is that you want the tail oriented like it is here. Curl down, hook in it like this. And you do the exact same thing. You come down to the point of the hook is in, come out and you Texas rig it into the body. Just kink it and line it up, put it in, slide the hollow point, pull it down, and screw it in. There you go. And so now, with the tail this way, it can be used like a uh, buzz bait or like uh, you would a Big Easy. If you're down here in Florida, you know about these. Um, it's almost like a weedless buzz bait. It's amazing. But you can also uh, let it drop into holes and it'll sink and this tail will flap and it also kind of sinks like a Cinco with a little extra action. But here again, you can't slide down on the hook and you're not going to get stuck on weeds or grass every time you throw it out. This also really helps with pulling through lily pads and if you get in the little V, um, it really helps pull through. And yeah, that's part of the reason I use 50 pound braid is that I'm fishing in heavy pads, heavy grass, and all sorts of things. There are other solutions to this. This isn't the only way to do it. They do make these bullets that are similar to bobber stops. They go on like a bobber stop, and you can use a regular hook and put this on. The only, and it will help. The only problem with these are that it doesn't do anything to keep your Cinco or worm or whatever on the hook. 
but they do come in handy, so I do keep a few with me all the time. Sometimes um, if I'm using a swim bait in heavy cover with one of these hooks and I keep getting grass on it, I'll just slide this on the line in front of the swim bait like that. I'll show that to you as well. Um, and it'll help come through the grass. All right, guys, the rest of it, I'll just uh, take some photos of these other baits rigged Florida style. Oh, let me show you one other thing. There is now, in small sizes, they don't make a big one yet, so you can't really flip or punch with it. Otherwise, I probably would. They make tungsten Florida rig baits. And these little tungsten weights are perfect for these are uh, the original speed worms with the paddle tail. This is an excellent uh, lightweight grass punching flipping bait. It just slides down in with a little bullet weight and hook. Um, I actually use this hook a lot for this. It's a um, Berkeley Fusion worm hook. And it does still have the little kickback bend that can get on weeds. But I find that it's usually in the worm enough that it's not an issue. And so with these, when rigging these speed worms, Texas rig or Florida rigged, I'll slide the hook in. Like I said, you want to go down. Basically, you need to go further into the worm as far as this part of the weight sticks out. So this is what, maybe not even a quarter inch. But I rig it so that it's flat and the hook is like this, so that it is parallel to the flat part of the kicking worms, the swimming worms flat tail there. So Texas rig it like you normally would just a little deeper. This isn't quite perfect, but I'll give you the idea. And then this would be on your line and then you would slide it down and then screw it on. So it's not quite straight, but I would straighten out. But if you see this little kink in the hook, since this is a smaller hook than this hook, it's not getting hung quite as much. Um, I really haven't found a better solution yet. I'm still looking for a better hook to do this. I'm a big fan of these Berkeley Fusion hooks for the money. They're a coated uh, Superline hook. I get the Superline version of the Fusion 19s. Pretty much the only hook I use for flipping and worm rigging if I can get it other than this Mustad hook. So yeah, I'll use the same hook and this with a trick worm. Sometimes I'll use another hollow point if I need a weightless trick worm, Texas rigged. Um, the only other time I use a different hook is with these bigger worms. And sometimes you want the weight to be free, like a regular Texas rig with an unpegged weight, and that's great. But like I said, I fish in super heavy cover, and sometimes you need that weight to stay in front of the worm to get it into the hole in the cover. And this is not even what I would call flipping or punching. This is just fishing the weed banks in Florida. So for these bigger um, worms, I have this owner hook. It's, I don't know, like a 10 aught, but it's got a super long shank. So it sits way deeper in the worm. And so this is a 10 inch power worm, and this is the young, what is this, the mag worm? I forget exactly, but this is a 12 inch worm, but I'll show you with the power worm how I'd rig this. So you, this is the curly tail, ribbon tail worm. And so I always rig it on the flat side of the worm. There's the round side and the flat side. So I always rig my uh, curly, my ribbon tail worms on the flat side. Both zoom and power worm have the same flat side. So this shank of the hook is even longer, so you're going to have to go way down deeper than normal. Like that. To get the hook in and Texas rigged. And yet again, I don't text pose because I'm fishing in such heavy cover. 
I don't want anything showing. And I try to get my worms really straight. And actually with these, when I'm fishing it, sometimes I'll use this little tungsten, but that's when actually these old school lead weights come in handy. It's not as sensitive or as dense as the tungsten, but when you put these on, obviously you'd have your line connected to the hook, you'd have your line tied. You put this on and then when you screw the weight in, it acts like a wedge for the same weight size, it's way bigger, but it acts like a wedge to get through the cover. And so this is one of the few times where I actually will pick lead over tungsten, partially because they don't make as many tungsten weights in this Florida rig style as they do these old school lead weights. I've probably had this particular weight for maybe 10 years. I have a bag of them. And every now and then I have to rig a worm like this and I'll use it. It's the exact same way I'd rig this even bigger worm. I also use the Yum or the man's worms, the man's uh, big worms, and I rig them the same way, either with the tungsten or the lead, depending on how heavy the cover. With these young worms, they're a little more streamlined, so a lot of times I'll use the tungsten because it lines up with the front of the worm really well. Like that. And yeah, you could use a lead weight and a bobber stop, but even that little bit of bobber stop in the front of the weight is in something else for those weeds to get a hold of. And I'm not joking, I've had weeds get stuck on just that little tiny rubber stopper on the front of a weight. And these weights in this rigging style, like I said, has the benefit even with the weighted ones or the unweighted ones of helping you keep your worm on your hook so it doesn't slide down. And through heavy cover, like we fish down here in Florida, that's essential. And uh, how about, when do I use this hook? The one with the kickback. I use that on these big easies. And this is what swim bait fishing means to most Floridians. The Gambler Big Easy, it's a little six inch swim bait. But I have yet to find a swim bait that you could rip across the surface better than this. And it also, is designed to come through cover. There's tons of videos, even Eric from Atypical has made a couple good videos. Uh, Mikey Balls has good videos. And I even believe Scott Martin has a video using this similar bullet that I believe Reaction Innovation used to make these before Gambler did. But it's an old video, you can find it on YouTube. But so I'll take these big offset wide gap hooks from, um, actually I believe this one's a Trocar, not a Gamagatsu. And I'll rig it the same way I rig these worms, Texas rig, going a little deeper. But because the plastic on this bait is so much thicker, that kickback is hidden in the bait. But these baits are even better for the swim bait, like this, because they've got a wider gap. Most of my friends I know use these, the swim bait hooks, to do this, and they actually will use a weighted one to try to keep it centered, keeled basically, when you rip it. And I find that if you use these hooks, they're heavy enough that this bait's gonna be keeled anyway. There's no need for a weighted swim bait hook. I pretty much don't ever use these hooks for my Big Easy, unless I'm in some kind of situation where there's not a lot of cover, and probably then I would use a weighted one, not an unweighted one. So then I just take the Gambler Bullet, which is great, because it's a Gambler bait, and I just would obviously have the hook tied to the line and I tie it on and now this comes through your weeds even better than it did just rigged with a normal hook, Texas rig. And it can come through those little V's and your lily pads, which I don't know if you are like me, it's one of the banes of my existence. Are those little V notches and lily pads and you get your bait in there, it ruins your rigging or gets your frog stuck. This makes this almost impervious to it. I mean, you still can get caught, but it's gonna pull through a lot easier. So yeah, that's the Florida rig. I'll put some more catches in here at the end.
fish. I'll oh, post spawn. I'll oh, skip. that leader off. Got to be eight, maybe. Thanks for watching my Florida rig uh, hack DIY worm Cinco fishing video. I'm Ted from Ted Lincoln's Fishing Life. I'm out. <laughs>